Hello. Okay, so today I will start talking about cruises. I'll also talk about innovation and technology, but I guess you find cruises more interesting, so I'll start with this. Okay, so taking a cruise is, of course, a great experience. You get to see one of the, some of the most beautiful places on Earth. You get to see more than one place in a single trip. You always get to have a great sea view, and you can always, you know, meet people, relax and get drunk, as you would do with any other vacation. Now, the unique thing about cruises is that it's more than a vacation. It's both a destination and a means of transportation. And as with all means of transportation, things can go wrong. Things went wrong on January 2012, off the shores of Italy, when 32 people were lost. Things went terribly wrong uh, earlier this year in South Korea, when 300 people were lost. Of course, this was a ferry accident, uh, not a cruise ship, but still a means of maritime transportation, and it put maritime safety on the spotlight. Um, I don't mean to scare you, I know it's too late for that, but if you look at the statistics, maritime uh, transportation is still one of the safest means to travel. It's much safer than driving a car, it's as safe as taking a plane, so statistically, if you survive your drive to the airport and the flight to the embarkation port, don't worry about a thing. The thing is that maritime safety can become a lot safer using technology. To be fair, technology is already there. The maritime industry has been investing, just like uh, other transportation industries, has been investing heavily over the past decades in safety systems. So nowadays, cars, airplanes, and ships have hundreds to thousands of state-of-the-art sensors dedicated to structural monitoring and disaster escalation sensing. But there is a key difference between cars, airplanes, and ships. It's size. Cruise ships are vast in size. The largest ones can accommodate more than 8,000 people. So, in case of an emergency, things can get a bit more complicated than the case of cars and airplanes, because you have to evacuate not four, not 100, but 8,000 people in just under half an hour. You have to gather them, count them, identify them, board them on lifeboats, and make sure that no one's left behind. So imagine the task when you are missing just a few people. You would have to search for them in an area that spans over 15 football fields, and not an open space. This is an area full of decks, corridors, cabins, engine rooms, recreation areas. So this is a very difficult task. And you would expect that the maritime industry is relying on state-of-the-art technology to solve this problem. Well, it does rely on paper and pencil, basically. So, and walkie-talkies. Um, so, basically, identification and counting is done by shouting names on open decks and taking notes, and you need walkie-talkies because officers do not have a direct view of what's happening on board. They have to communicate through VHF radio with their crew to get information on the situation. So, um, this is clearly a weak point in maritime safety, and this is where technology and innovation comes in to make things safer. The industry has been looking for solutions for quite some time, and some years ago, um, a couple of Cypriot visionaries came up with an idea. And not only that, they formed a consortium from members, from partners across Europe, and they secured EU funding, and they did that so that I can stand here before you and give this talk. And I was asked to join them in uh, 2012, to join them on board, and as you can see, I did, literally. 
So here's what we've been doing over the past three years. First of all, we had to ensure that officers have a direct view of what's happening. Officers should be looking at a screen like this, seeing at a glance the ship, where problems are, and where people are. And how do we gather all this information centrally? Well, the part of seeing where the problems are is already there with disaster escalation sensing, but not the problem of tracking people. Of course, there have been some ideas uh, over the years of how to do that, using cameras, motion sensors, biometric sensors. The use of cameras was not very well accepted. Somehow people did not want cameras in their cabins. Um, motion sensors cannot really count people. Biometric sensors are a new exciting technology. However, they're not, they're not robust enough, especially in the presence of large amounts of people, and cruise ships have large amounts of people. So here's an idea that makes sense uh, in, in terms of um, scalability, user acceptance, and robustness. Instead of trying to find people directly, let's try to find devices that people carry. Think of GPS. It's the same thing. Okay, GPS can give you your location if you carry with you a GPS receiver on your mobile phone or tablet. Okay, let's do the same thing on ships. The problem is that in ships, GPS does not work. Ships are like, you know, huge floating metal boxes when, when inside them you cannot have signals from satellites. So in essence, what we had to do was build our own GPS system from scratch, not with satellites. We just upgraded the existing fire detection system, the existing fire detectors, so that they could sense not only fire and smoke, but also devices that people carry. And this way, we could use the existing network, fire, fire safety uh, network of the ship, to bring the, all this information centrally. And not only that, um, we could plant devices on things people carry when on board or during emergency. Life jackets, bracelets, and key cards. Life jackets you already have to wear during emergency. Bracelets and key cards are already well accepted as a means of payment and means of entering your room in large theme parks, in uh, hotels, in ships. So, once we plant devices on life, uh, life jackets, uh, bracelets, and key guards, we can see where people are. We can track people. And not only that, identification and counting is much more faster. Actually, it, it is instantaneous. Once you have an emergency and you power up the system, you can see who is where. And if everything else goes wrong, and you end up overboard, the same devices can help you once more. They can send signals to approaching search and rescue teams, to nearby lifeboats that can pick you up, or even to UAVs and drones that are launched from the sinking ship and stay in the area so that they can keep track of you until search and rescue teams arrive. And finally, with devices like this, you can do much more than retrieve just location information. You can see whether someone is actively taking part in the evacuation process, if your heart is still beating, if you have passed out or not. Once overboard, they can tell how much time you have been in the water and what is the ambient temperature. Now, all this is critical information for approaching search and rescue teams so that they can prioritize their access to those people that are uh, in the most critical condition. So you see that, you know, with a, uh, starting off with a simple idea, we can claim that we have built technology that saves people's lives at sea. And actually, I have boasted quite a lot about this, okay, over the years. Uh, that is, until I got to go on a cruise myself. 
And uh, I did that twice. I took uh, two three-day cruises on the Aegean Sea for testing. And uh, two things happened. First, I had to convince family and friends that this was just work and not pleasure. Okay, it was hard to do. Uh, the second thing was that I got to meet these people, seafarers. And I grew to have great respect for them, because these are people that carry a huge responsibility. They are responsible for thousands of people's lives on their call. Every day they have to deal with problems that they face and they solve, oftentimes with very few means and very scarce information, so that we, they do not spoil our vacation. And when facing disaster, all of them, but a few, deal with it with great courage. It is true that in the last two years, the two most severe accidents, the main responsibility for how things turned out was with officers. But this is how we have set up the, the scene for them. We have given them so much load to carry. And it doesn't have to be like this. It has been shown that if officers have enough information, their stress levels decrease, and they're more likely to make the correct, to take the correct actions. Now, there is this relevant myth in the Greek mythology. Um, when Jason set off for the quest for the Golden Fleece, he gathered the best heroes, the best crew and captain there were. Uh, but they wouldn't set off until a very special hero arrived. His name, his name was Linceus. And he had the ability of keen sight to look, to, to look further, to look deeper, if you, if you will. Um, so he could foresee dangers and secure safe sailing. Nowadays, we have replaced magic powers with technology. And as Linceus did, is that we just support seafarers, because despite what the title of the talk says, it's not technology that saves people's lives. It's people that will always be the ones saving people's lives. Thank you very much.